watching Indie Music Reviewer. acoustic issue that we have coming out June 4th. Congratulations, Sean. We Thanks. appreciate it. You are actually uh, in the top five of our artists. Very, very cool, happy man. to have you here. Thank you very much for taking the time being My here pleasure. today. Thank uh, you guys for voting, for getting me involved. You know? Oh, no, hey. actually, it was it was all our editor, myself, it was some of the writers that all voted for you. We all loved your stuff. And uh, you're a great player. You guys Sweet. will find out later in, in the video here and uh, <laughs> through some of the clips there. Uh, he, he's pretty pretty kick-ass, so, so make sure you check him out. Uh, first off, let's go ahead and get started. Tell us about yourself. Tell us what you're doing. Tell us about the album that you have right now. Uh, well, I just like I play guitar. I travel. You know, I like to play shows for people to listen to music. Um, I got a record out. I got a DVD out. Uh, the album's all original music. Um, the DVD is mostly original with just a couple covers, like a some Stevie Wonder because he's one of my favorite artists, and a Leonard Cohen too because Leonard Cohen's my favorite songwriter. So, yeah, that's just my thing. I go around opening up for uh, trying to open up for big acts that have large followings uh, or headlining shows if I can get folks to a show and just. Yeah, connect with an audience through music and guitar playing. And you're completely independent or you have a label? I have a label that dis uh, distributes the music, uh, Favorite Nations, uh, Steve Vai's label. Okay. Uh, they just kind of help distribute it digitally through Amazon and iTunes and all that stuff and CD Baby. Um, but I do my all my own tour support. And I have a manager down in Florida and I have some producers that help with the writing process. But as far as a label helping with that stuff, I, I do everything on, on my own with that. So. God, I think that's yeah. what independent musicians need now. I think uh, they can do a lot on their own. But when it comes to actually getting the music out there, they need someone to help dis mm -hmm. distribute it, you know? Yep. Uh, the marketing I, side of things, yeah, big big time. Did the label come to you? Did you search out a label or did it come to you? Basically, I uh, went to a Tommy Manual. make a long story short. I went to a Tommy Manual show like three or four years ago and I met a rep from Favorite Nations. Literally gave her my website. She got back to me and said, here's Steve I's email, you know, contact him, send him a video. I sent him like this poor quality video of me playing a tune that I wrote. What song and, uh, was that? It's called Over the Line. Over the Line, uh, that's my favorite yeah, one. It's a Big Lebowski reference, so look for that one in the movie. Okay. It's my favorite movie ever. <laughs> Great. Um, but yeah, basically he watched the video and he was he sent me this long email back. He's like, wow, you're fantastic. Steve Vai. Steve, Steve Vai is talking directly to you. Freaked me out. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> As Steve a guitar Vai player, just, that would freak yeah. me out too, yes. Yeah, Steve Vai was like, you're good. I was like, he just said I was good. I'm happy now. So that was kind of cool to hear from him. And, uh, and after that, he said, uh, you know, do a record. Send it to me, and we'll you know, talk about maybe you know getting you involved in the roster. Sure enough, a couple years later, I uh, went to my buddy Matt Glisson, wrote some tunes, and you know we put the album out, and I got signed. So and they're helping just you know distribute that, and the YouTube videos also help. been so many dreams come true already for me like uh, open for BB King in January at a 3,000 seat venue uh, uh, two weeks later I play for Stevie Wonder himself and there's a video on YouTube of that like I'm sitting there playing for Stevie Wonder he's four feet away from me at NAMM and I'm sitting there playing his music for him so that was freaky and amazing at the same time and then uh, just a few weeks ago I opened for the Gypsy Kings at Ruth Eckerd Hall down in Clearwater Florida that's a 2,500 seat venue uh, Ended up being like the first opening act to get a standing ovation there, so that was cool. So all kind of stuff's been happening lately, and then you know, I've come to find out one of my YouTube videos is kind of starting to go viral. Uh, it's up to like half a million views now. Wow! Yeah, a company called True Fire Productions is really working with me now for really. What's True Fire Productions? Just True a Fire video is, crew. Yep, it's a company out of St. Petersburg, Florida that uh, they do incredible video production for musicians. Is that just, so, the videos that are on your website too? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Videos on my website. Uh, some were done by Casey Grillo. He's the drummer for Camelot, and some were done by True Fire. Uh, before we continue too much here, let's tell them where they can get your music at. Oh, right, you just go to SeanHopper.com. SeanHopper.com. Right, go to um, uh, CD Baby, type in Sean Hopper. Go to Amazon.com, type in Sean Hopper. You know, just do a search on Google and it'll pop up. Great. Yeah. Um, on Monday, Sean, Sean has agreed to actually give a track away for free yeah. uh, in, until July 4th. So all the way up until yeah. Independence Day, for 30 days, you can get a free track. It's, it's Traveling Battle Traveling Cat. Traveling Battle Cat. Yeah. Tell, tell us uh, about that song. 
I, it's just a crazy aggressive finger picking tune. I got the influence from my, again my buddy Matt Glisson. He's just incredible, progressive like prog rock me metal writer, along with like crazy orchestration and just horn sections in his music. He's got incredible ideas. And um, there's some clips of him on your on your YouTube yeah, channel, right? Yeah, guys. Check it. inspiration come from and you already kind of answering that but I mean well, where, where do you write at are you on on tour or when you write that that comes at any moment like, edit? Uh, okay you can be on tour you can be traveling across the country and like you know going through uh, some awesome mountains in Colorado or you know you can be in Southern California on a beautiful beach you, you can be anywhere like you know going through Montana and like a, a friggin moose comes up next to your car you can write a you can just get inspired to want to write something anywhere so yeah, down in Florida, I wrote Singing Through the Storm, sitting on a beach in Treasure Island. Yeah, you know, just with the storm actually forming, like, around me, and just the, the theme came in my head, so. No, a lot of your stuff is, I mean, all of it right now is instrumental, right? But uh, Yeah, I've got some, uh, my next record will have, like, maybe three or four tunes with a uh, vocal. Some, some lyrics I've, I've spent a couple years writing after relationship with a girl, you know, uh-oh. Uh one of those. Um, yeah, I was with this chick and, you know, ended up writing some tunes and uh, again, I went to my buddy Matt. He helped produce it and write and uh, they got another record coming out soon that'll have some vocal stuff on it as well as more instrumental uh, tunes as well. So. Okay, so the question I was getting to what was, you know, I, I think some people have a problem, especially writers, you know, a lot of our audience is going to be other musicians just like yourself, yeah. maybe not as good as you. <laughs> well, that's all relative. Like, <laughs> You're right; it's all relative. Good, bad, like you're I, good songwriting, good, yeah. good, good melodies, whatever. But a lot of people, but I know a lot Justin of Bieber than me, a lot so. of people, you know, like relate words to emotions. Mm -hmm. And whereas you, what you're doing right now, it's the the melodies, the actual music to emotions. You know, like what are we hearing in your music? Like, is like when you write, is there something specific you're trying to achieve, or is it going to be? Well, you, you know, you tell that me universal what, language. Tell me about uh, that. That universal language of melody, like. When it comes to just and when you're not hearing a lyric to persuade your emotion in one direction or the other, when it's just a note followed with a chord, a beautiful chord or, or an aggressive chord, whatever's going on there, like the listener can receive that however they want, as opposed to like, okay, I heard a lyric, you know, says so like, oh, I cared about her so much, oh, I cared about her so much, like you've, you're putting in perspective what you want that listener to hear, you know, what you're singing about, which is cool. Like Leonard Cohen does it the best with his stories, you know. But when it's just a melody, though, they can form in their head how it makes them feel, whatever the lyrics they hear. Like, there's something beautiful about that when it comes to instrumental tunes. And one of the coolest tunes I ever heard, uh, that many instrumentals that I listen to, but one, Tommy Emanuel wrote a song called Lewis and Clark. Yes, I know like, it. Oh, man. This, like, you listen to that, I was driving through out west and I popped that tune on because I remember he, tell, he told the story how he wrote it you know, about the American West and when it was, you know, just forming back in the day. And uh, I listened to it going through these mountains and it's incredible. It's like a journey. So you form in your head, you paint the picture in your head with just hearing the note and the beautiful chords change under a flowing melody. So it just well, really inspired me after Michael Hedges and Don Ross. I heard those guys. It's like, I think I want to, you know, I'm, I want to do this, you know. Well, it's great what you're doing. I, uh, the emotion definitely comes through, and you're exactly right. As I'm listening, Thank and you. I think as our readers will be listening, you'll you'll see, you know, different emotions will come to you. And I Oh, the one Sorry. that, uh, my debut album is out now, it's called Lowercase Letters. It's actually, yeah. you had another one right before there, did you just re, uh, that, that re was a demo. some stuff? That was a demo called Once Written. Um, I recorded that after I lived in Atlanta for probably like three years ago. I lived in Atlanta for a little while, and um, I played at Eddie's Attic songwriter competition. I ended up winning, and I went to the finals, the biannual shootout, 
and I was the only instrumentalist in the whole thing. Everybody else was a vocalist. 25 acts, and I got down to the final round. And Eddie comes up and he's like, nobody's ever done this before without singing. Never has anybody went this far in this competition without singing. And I was like, well, I'm honored. You know, I'm like, it's amazing that I was, I'm able to be a part of this. So I didn't win. I got beat out in the last round by a girl named Adrian. She was amazing. And, uh, but out of it, I won some studio time, went and made that demo. Once written. Five tunes that I had, again, that my buddy Matt helped me write. And uh, after so, that, so the, the attic is, is is really what propelled you to do what you're doing. Yeah, now. I got uh, essentially. I got that songwriting got competition that. really got me inspired. Like people responding to my melodies. You might want to say thank you to Eddie. What? Don't you? Hey, Eddie Owen, thanks a lot, brother. I hope you see this. I haven't seen you in forever, and I hope I get to play your new venue soon. So <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that that's uh, cool. That's an yeah. interesting story. Well, Eddie was great. He, 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 he gave happened. me a chance um, in Atlanta, and it springboarded onto other things. So. I got that demo, and that led to you know other things, and eventually I got to record a full-length album, and I got lowercase letters is the one that's on the label. And I've got a DVD out now called The String Poet, which is a title off my album, with you know some videos of some percussive type tunes with some crazy style that I like to, people to actually see and hear, mm -hmm. you know, as, as opposed to just oh I can hear a guitar and some melody and some beats going on. That sometimes people might think there's a conga player playing with you. When they see that you're doing everything, it's a whole new visual effect that they enjoy. So that's yeah. cool. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot a, of fun too. I'm so. very interested to, to to hear the vocals. That'd be. Are you, oh, are you yeah. singing tonight? You're playing tonight. I'll probably sing one or two songs tonight. Um, I got you know just a couple renditions of tunes I like to do, some cover songs as well as some originals. So I always read the audience to see if it's a real listening type audience. I'll get them quiet and I'll play them a. You know, I'll play some aggressive stuff, get them hyped up, and then bring them right down and play them, a, you know, I'll sing a tune for them, play them an original, tell them a story, then pick it right back up. But it all depends on the audience, so. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to read them. <laughs> Let's talk about some of these mentors you said. Well, uh, like I said, Bill Brown down in Valdosta, Georgia, was probably the first one that exposed me to uh, the style of guitar playing, finger style, the separation of bass and melody and chords all in you know one arrangement. Uh, got exposed to that through him, neoclassical and jazz, basically. Then another guy named Neftali Santiago, classical player, really took me to another level. And then I met a guy named Sam Pacetti that just whole, opened up a whole new world. Crazy, just aggressive finger style guitar playing, amazing technique, and he's a great vocalist. And just people along the way, Tommy Emanuel, Don Ross, Martin Taylor, uh, Matt Glisson, uh, John Lieberman, Michael Marth. I got so many of them. Don't forget there. anybody. Don't forget anybody. Adam Rafferty. <laughs> um, did, I, did I say Martin Taylor? Which is a <laughs> funny name for a guitar player, but it's very it's true. Real. Martin Taylor, great jazz guitar player. Uh, Pete Huttlinger. And the list just Michael Hedges. The list goes on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, this is something I always love to ask because I know when you start young like that, you, your influences change. You know, who did you like when you were ten? Who who were you listening uh, to? Who was your influences then? Silverchair and Nirvana. <laughs> yep. So I remember like buying Frog Stomp and like just skateboarding around, listening to it over and over. And then of course Nirvana. The first thing I ever learned on guitar was the bass line to Polly. And I was so amazed that like I'd play that over and over for ten hours a day. Oh, if that's yeah. every little kid, they're just yep. practicing the same thing. They want to be yep. Kurt Cobain up on stage. Yep. <laughs> well, um, let's go through, through some of the live questions there. Uh, tell us about your guitars. Your who you're who you're sponsored by? Uh, this is Martin Guitar. This is a Martin OMC. Uh, these guys sponsored started sponsoring me a year ago. Uh, met Chris Martin himself. And he just walked up to me at a venue and said, "Hey, are you uh, you're the guy in the posters?" And I said, "Yeah, what's up, man?" He goes, "Well, I'm Chris Martin with Martin Guitars," and I was like, "You wow, oh, give me a second. <laughs> I lost it. Dude. I was like, "Holy crap, dude! It's Chris Martin from Martin Guitars." Like I was freaking out. And uh, he heard me play, and he was very impressed. And he said, "I'd like to work with you." And then I uh, come to find out later, it was kind of cool. It was very flattering to find out that uh, I was the first artist that he handpicked. Most of the time, an artist gets discovered through artist relations, which is cool. You get work with Martin is great, and I was the first one that uh, that he selected. 
like himself. He's like, I want to sponsor this guy. Congratulations, like, that's really cool. That'd be great. So uh, they're in the works right now of making me a signature model Sean Hopper Martin guitar. I'm excited to get that. Hopefully wow. I'll have a little grasshopper on there. Guys, you, you knew him before he was famous here. <laughs> he's, he's on his way. Give it up for Sean Hopper. <laughs> uh, okay, so you got some other things. So, I mean, you, you brought in a compact mobile two, an AER. Um, is this another thing you're sponsored by? Is yep, AER is a German company. Uh, amazing product. The compact mobile. It's a 60 watt amplifier that's battery powered. You totally can charge this thing up like previous recordings. and take it out anywhere, and just it's got wonderful reverb, a great EQ, great components. Just incredible stuff. So it's AER. It's a, they call themselves the acoustic people. So if you're looking for acoustic tone, AER is the way to go. Yeah. Got it. Uh, what about anything else? Uh, one, one of the questions that I had. Uh, it seems it would be tough to get your sound, but it just appears to be a mic sometimes when I see your stuff on stage. Is there also a preamp where you plugged in direct? There is. These a, are for the guitar gear. I know a, we have them. There's a preamp in the guitar. Um, you know, pickup up under the saddle, bolted, a magnetic pickup with piezos that pick up each individual string to give me a very balanced tone, string to string, because I'm using every string as doing another part in the song, so I need each one of them to cut through the mix very even. Uh, and there is a microphone as well for any kind of like, any kind of percussion. I want that to thunder through the mix, but not be overpowering, so it's all got to balance very nicely. Um, and as far as any stage monitor stuff, I'll use this AER with a powered sub next to me to fill my sound up that I need to hear. Of course. I'll send a line out to the PA, and then a sound guy will dial in my tone out front. And all you need is a touch of reverb and that's it. Just go with it, yeah. Easy sound. Sometimes I use a volume pedal to get like a, a Tim Reynolds type uh, like vo a swelling effect, like a violin, mm -hmm. a yeah. expression. That's another guitar player I want to thank is Tim Reynolds for letting me tour with him and open up for him so many times. Thank you, Tim. You're awesome. Uh, but yeah, that's really it. It's very min minimal. Sometimes I use a Bose L1 if it's a gig. I have control of the sound over. Mm -hmm. Bring in the Bose system. I can dial it in. It's got a nice parametric EQ. Just plug into it. Dial in your sound. Go. Yeah. Make sure it sounds clean and even for your audience because they're going to hear the melody and you want them to in get involved. So you got to draw them in with that melody. Cool. Yeah. I'm sure our, our guitar and gear has a light. track for us but um, doesn't bother I, me at some like, point um, you have to make money you know and, and where, you do, do, you, you where do. do you see yourself as a musician well, making money and how do you feel about giving away your music you put out a few tunes because you want to draw people in you want people to enjoy it you want them to enjoy your music whether yeah you're getting paid for it or not if you're sitting in a bedroom playing for somebody or hanging out on a street corner playing for somebody you want it to be enjoyed if somebody is willing to offer you anything it's much appreciated. Um, you don't certainly you don't want it pirated and taken. Just you know every album downloaded for free because people put a lot of work into that stuff. You know they they go to a studio, they sit down, they get frustrated. They get yeah, does that take good? Is this solid enough to capture the emotion? When they finally get it, they they appreciate it when people do offer a little money for it. So it helps support them to make another one. If you like what, that artist, you you, see, you keep them going. So. What about the argument that? Pirating music helps musicians because it does. Say, well, yeah, you know, getting it bootleg and it goes viral, like it's, it is going to help the music because their name is going to get out there. So, and again, I say it, it's okay, you know, to give away some stuff. Like you want to give away some stuff, you know, like Dave Matthews doing it back in the day, like letting people just film whatever at a show. Of course, and it spread like wildfire, and you got an empire of fans. Yeah, yeah. So it's actually smart, you know. It's just it's free marketing. You're gonna have people that are gonna go spread the word for you like crazy, and then they're gonna talk about you really cool because oh he was so cool he let us film. He wasn't like you know he or she wasn't cocky about it. So of course you're gonna, gonna let us film yeah. tonight, right? We listened to uh, Joe Smothers on the way up here. Um, he's a good friend of ours, actually. And my buddy Matt just produced his album. Great singer-songwriter, got an incredible voice, tells great stories. Um, I've been listening to a band called A Big Goodbye lately. Incredible progressive metal, very melodic. Uh, just metal. It, You're metal. listening to oh, metal, dude. I, I work out <laughs> at Seven Dust, but then I'll I'll go home and like chill out to you know, Famous Blue Raincoat by Leonard Cohen. So. 
the spectrum is wide on music with me because I love anything that's well written when work's put into it. So, yeah, but a big goodbye is a band I've been listening to a lot lately. I, you, you'll love that stuff. It's it's a new band that's just come out, and their debut album has gotten incredible reviews. So I've just been wearing that record out. It's like uh, a mix between everything like Dream Theater, Chicago, Pink Floyd, King Crimson, uh, like Muse. Like there's so a Toto. There's so many influences. Wow. All the way back to the 17th century. You heard it, guys. Now. If you want to be good at acoustic guitar, just start listening to metal. Yeah. Uh, Opeth. Listen to Opeth. <laughs> Opeth, yeah. That I guy, do. <laughs> Mikhail, I think is his name. Oh, my God, dude. I mean, his writing is incredible. Actually, all of it, his, especially his acoustic stuff. Well, uh, a few more questions here. Talk about your strings. What are your favorite strings? What do you use? What, um, is, it? what is the gauge string that you use? These are uh, Martin SP Long Lives. They're... Uh, these are 13 to 56 medium. Okay. Yep, heavy. heavy. It's, it's a heavy tone. You gotta get that bass. And it'll it'll get tough on the hands and the forearms a little bit, but you get used to it, you know. Uh, it's like, all yeah, about the yeah, tone, so. Yeah? Yeah. Um, and what's next for you? Like, we got the album coming out. When can we see the next album? Hopefully, uh, within the next four to five months, I'm gonna have something. So, I gotta head up north for some shows, for a tour, so when I come back, Hopefully I'll get to work and get something put out. How many uh, shows are you on? How, uh, how long is your tour right now? I don't have the full schedule yet, but it's going to be um, probably until late September. Wow. About and it's three June to now. four shows a week. So. Wow. Yeah, I'm going to be crazy busy. How many shows but a year do you play? 150, 200? About that, yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. It's getting busier and busier. That's why I'm glad, I'm glad I got a manager now, um, you know, a producer. I got people involved, you know, a marketing team because every little bit helps now. As you get busier, you gotta have people you trust and in your corner to back you up. So. By the way, I just want to make make a shout out to shout out myself. Melanie from your management team was yep. was very helpful. Yep. She's great. Oh very, yeah, very Melanie helpful. Tyler and uh, and John Lieberman. Yeah, great people. Right. I don't well, know what I'd do without them. Is there anything else you want to say? Uh, just again, I want to thank everybody for for voting and supporting me through uh, through you guys' website and your Facebook page and. Uh, Please keep hitting my fan page because, like, because of you, like, today I just checked it and, like, I'm at almost like 60,000 likes on my fan page now. So, congratulations, yeah. man. Everything's kind of climbing. So, it's kind of we'll becoming a dream come true. I've been working at it a long time, but it only happens because of the listener. Yeah. Well, guys, make sure you go get his uh, album, Lowercase Letters. Check it out at seanhopper.com. Say goodbye yeah. to your new fans, Sean. See you guys. Thank you.